if you've ever thought Jesus was a nice guy and that you maybe wanted to follow him, but then you started actually reading some of the things he said and you were like, dude, that's kind of harsh. Well, then this video is for you. And if we're meeting for the very first time, my name is John Whitaker. Uh, I've been a Bible teacher for a long time, and my passion is to connect the Bible with life. I believe that Bible teaching should be blue jeans theology. That is theology for ordinary life. And if that sounds like something that might be helpful to you, then just go ahead and consider subscribing right now. You know, oftentimes we think Jesus is just a nice guy. We uh, think maybe we'll just add a little Jesus to our life. We like maybe some of the things we've heard about him. Heard that maybe he could make your life a little bit better. So you thought you would add a little bit of Jesus to your life. And the fact is, is that's just not the way it works. Jesus wants more for you than that. And the text I want to look at in this uh, five-minute Bible study is a passage out of Luke chapter 9 where three people come to Jesus in various ways and they, they are would-be followers. There are people maybe who, like you, were like, man, I just think maybe I want to follow Jesus. And it doesn't go so well for them and it feels kind of harsh. Let's take a look at this. Luke chapter 9, beginning in verse 57. So as they're going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Notice that. This is like a would-be follower who comes to Jesus and he's eager. He wants, to, he wants to follow Jesus. I will follow you wherever you go. Listen to how Jesus responds. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man, which is the way Jesus refers to himself, the Son of Man, it comes out of Daniel 7, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. In other words, Jesus is saying, look, I, I, you want to follow me? You got to understand what you're getting yourself into. I mean, are you sure you're really up for that? In fact, Jesus seems to be referring to probably what just happened before where he was traveling from northern Israel down south, has to go through Samaria, and he's been rejected in Samaria, and the people of Samaritan won't even let him stay there. Are you willing to follow me? Because that might mean rejection. It might mean being misunderstood. It might mean ridicule. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Um, another fellow uh, comes to Jesus, and Jesus said to him, Follow me. Jesus invites this guy to follow him. Follow me. Um, and this fellow said to Jesus, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus responds and says, let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Now, this is one of those places where it sounds kind of harsh, doesn't it? Like, dude, Jesus, aren't you going to let this guy just go to his dad's funeral? But we have to understand the cultural background. In fact, one of the most important things to reading the Bible well is to actually recognizing that it was written in a different culture and there's a kind of a cultural context that really shapes our understanding of the text. And so this phrase, let the dead bury their own dead, or when this guy says, um, let me first go bury my father. I mean, that, that's all shaped by their culture. And in their culture, this doesn't mean that his dad is already dead and he's just kind of been checking out Jesus after his dad has died and now it's time for the funeral. That's not the point. Here's what's really going on is, this is a cultural custom that says, I need to go and serve my, my parents until they have died and I have respectively, uh, respectfully laid them to rest. Once I've done that, Jesus, I will come and follow you. In other words, let me take care of my social obligations, my social responsibilities first, and then, Jesus, I'll get around to following you later. That's what's going on in this, this text. And so when Jesus says, wait, hold on, you got to let the dead bury their own dead, he's saying, I need to be more important to you than your family, your mom, your dad, uh, your whatever social responsibilities you have, I need to be more important than that. Another guy comes to Jesus. Uh, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at home. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And again, that, that's another one of those places where doesn't that sound a little bit harsh? Like, dude, Jesus, man, won't, won't you just let him go say goodbye to his mom and dad and to his family before he comes and follows you? And Jesus says, hey, look, if you're going to do that, if you're going to put your hand to the plow and then turn around and look back, bah, you're just really not fit for the kingdom of God. But again, we got to hear it in its cultural terms. When Jesus says, first let me go uh, say farewell to those at home, what that phrase actually means in their cultural context is, let me go ask my father permission to leave. One scholar, Kenneth Bailey, who spent his whole life in the, the Middle East says, I mean, even, even in modern times, a 40-year-old engineer from the city will make a, a you know, road trip out to the village 
to go sit and have tea with his dad and ask his dad about a career change. Will, will you permit me to make this job change? That's just their culture, and it's not our culture. And so when this guy, when this guy says, "Look, Lord, I want to follow you, but first let me go uh, bid farewell to my family," he's saying, "Let me go and sit with my father and ask permission to follow you." And Jesus says, "Hey, look, my my authority and my kingdom has to be higher than, greater than, deeper than even your own fathers," which in their culture is. Um, completely subversive. It goes against everything that they expected. Here's the thing. What Jesus is essentially doing and what he's essentially saying is this. He's saying, my authority, my kingdom has to be greater than anything else in life. You can't just, you know, add a little Jesus to your life. Uh, you can't just add a, a little bit of religion, a little bit of church to your life and have it go well. Jesus doesn't want that, and that's not the way it works. We should get this, right? Like, just about anything that's worth doing, man, it's got, we've got to be all in on that, don't we? Like, can you imagine, like, playing sports? And you're kind of, like, half-heartedly to the team. Oh, yeah, I'll play a little basketball. I'll, I'll show up to practice every now and then. I'll, I'll, I'll work out a little bit. It just wouldn't go well for you. Or your career, your job, like, eh, I'll kind of wander into work when I feel like it, drift out when I feel like it. I, I'll put, you know, kind of mediocre effort into it. It's just not going to work. It's kind of an all or nothing sort of thing for anything in life that's worthwhile. I mean, think of your family. If your family is important to you, eh, give a half-hearted effort. No, that's just not the way it works. And Jesus is the same. In fact, following Jesus has to be the centerpiece of everything in our life. And so with these three would-be followers of Jesus, essentially what he's saying to them is, Look, it's not enough for you just to kind of tack a little bit of Jesus onto your life to kind of make me, you know, second fiddle, third fiddle down the line. If you really want to follow me, Jesus is saying, then I have to be everything. If you're going to come to Jesus and you're going to follow Jesus, then here's the thing. Jesus challenges our deepest loyalties and our highest priorities. Jesus wants to be at the center of everything, whether it's our family, whether it's our career, whether it's our friends, whether it's our hobbies. Jesus is saying, look, I've got to be at the center of all of that, and the things that are important to me have to be the most important things to you. He wants to subvert, upend our entire life. Do you trust him enough to hand over your whole life to him and say, all right, Jesus, you can have it all. It's your way, not my way. Will you let Jesus challenge your deepest loyalties and your highest priorities? That's what it means to follow Jesus. Thanks again for checking out the five minute Bible study. And if you're one of those who likes to read, you wanna know more, you wanna get into this world of the Bible and the cultural background, I will link a book down below uh, from Kenneth Bailey that will help you really understand this text and others in their cultural context a little bit more. And once again, if you, uh, if you're new here and you haven't already, I'd invite you just to go ahead and click subscribe so you never miss a video. Turn on that uh, your notifications, ring that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. God bless you guys and we will see you in the next video.